Hello and welcome to the next section of, of our Rust project series. During this section of videos, we are going to be looking at Actix, which is a web framework and how we can use that effectively. During this video specifically, we are going to just get a website online. So to start, let's build a project, Cargo New Shop Site. We're going to use the shop database as the back database for this website. In our cargo.toml, we will need to add some dependencies. Actix, and that's version 0.7.9, and Actix Web, whose version is 0.7.19. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a HTTP server, and we'll just use new. And inside this server, we are going to give the functions that are going to run. And we can use normal functions or we can use closures. Obviously, we're going to need to use Actix Web here to do this. We'll use the HTTP server and we're going to need to use their file system FS mechanism within that too. We'll also need the app type and a HTTP response. Now, if you look, you'll see that we've got a closure which calls app new. We don't actually just send it a new app, we send it a closure, which is a factory. So this server can create several apps of the same type and run them simultaneously. Once we have our server, we're going to bind that to a port. In this case, we will bind it to our computer 127.0.0.1 and we'll choose the port 8088. Now this could fail if the port is already in use, so we will unwrap that, and once that's happened, we can run the server. Currently this server won't actually do a whole lot, but if we run it, you will see that some things happen, so this may take a second to import everything. Actix isn't a small project. So now if we Go to a browser and go to localhost 8088. You'll see it does return a response. It's not a very big response, but it is the default response that our server will return. But obviously that is not what we want to stick with. So let's change that and actually return some data. So here we're going to add a new handler to our app. In this case, it's going to handle the root path. That is everything. And we're going to return an FS static files and then a new. So this is going to be basically a static file server. And we'll put that in test site static. Now this can fail at launch. And I think it's okay to unwrap this because if you're struggling to find the files for a static site, you probably don't want to host a static site if the directory doesn't exist. We can add the show files listing so that if there is no file, it can bring up a list of subfiles so people can find their way through. And we will set the index file of this directory to index.html, which basically means if people come to the handler empty, it will take them to index.html. This is fairly standard web practice. If people come to the site without giving an address specifically, you normally return an index file. And now we're going to need to make a test site directory. So let's add a new folder called test site. And we'll stick a folder in there called static for our static site. Once we have our static site, we can add an index.html file and we will write some HTML. Hopefully this looks like familiar HTML to you. Now, if we run our server, oh, we have a problem here. Note there are several unwraps here. That's because the server has actually started several instances and each of them has failed. I think that's because we need a forward slash here. Okay, now the server's running. If we refresh this page, now we see our welcome page. Welcome to the shop. We hope you like it here. Now, Actix provides a mechanism for us to actually work with several apps at the same time. Maybe these apps could be completely different. And of course, we can create these apps in different functions if you'd prefer. But if we create a VEC of apps, then all of these apps will be started by the server. So let's have an app for the database and we'll give its prefix DB and we'll add a resource to this app. 
and this will work on the root of the db folder so the the forward slash here says well it's got to be inside db to get to this so it will be db and nothing else and in this case we want to return a different kind of response in this case we'll go for a http response and an okay one which is one of the options we'll set the content type to text plain we could set this to text json or whatever we want to do for this particular form and then we can set the body to anything we wish as long as it can become bytes and so in this case we're just going to say this is the database side of the app so we can see that the two of these are running separately and then we can finish this app too that's the complete the builder pattern and there's a something wrong here i've put a close bracket and i'm not using r why am i not using r uh, that's right we actually need to set the function so it's not resource and then it's for this resource we'll give it a function r.f and this will take a peer closure that takes a request but we can ignore that request on this occasion because we're not going to do anything with it and then return the http response now the response type can be anything that implements responder and one of the really cool things is that actually allows us to use futures. We're not going to do that yet, but shortly we will look at futures. But for now, I'm just going to put a little bit of text to say when this is running so we can see how often it actually runs. And here if we go to DB. And you'll see that that has happened exactly one time. And if we refresh the page, that will happen again. But it's also worth noting how often the resource function is called. So if we cancel this and run it again, we get eight cases of resource creating. Now, I believe that is two processor on the computer as a default value, but you can change that in the settings somewhere. It's worth knowing that it has to be a creation function because it is going to call the creation function several times.